Okay, you're back on the air with Eric and Robin Gagna on the Restaurant Brokers, and now it's time for my favorite segment, Restaurant Reality. That's the point where we give you the unbridled truth and reality of the restaurant business. So, Eric, we've been talking about bakeries today with a Food Network star. What stood out for you in that conversation? Well, Robin and listeners out there, you got to give me a moment. My head is still spinning. So much information was given today by Carrie that it, it was unbelievable. What, what Some of the things that I've really come out of this today is that we learned that even simple concept can be very tricky and difficult to execute. Just like the way in our book, Appetite for Acquisition, you have to build a team. We talk about building a team to buy a restaurant. I think you have to do the same thing here. You know, you, she talks about family and she talks about you know, a new recipe, going to convention and, and, and you know, getting people to help you getting current. It's just a matter of saying having a good lawyer, a good CPA, you know, for your restaurant. So I think it was very uh, sounding advice and uh, not get caught up by, by time. I mean, a lot of people seems like they were stuck in their ways. I mean, uh, the, the story about the little lady that wants that one cake every week. I mean, how many restaurants out there, you know, you guys out there listening, you know who I'm talking to you about that says we have a great following of customers and you sell five, you know, T-bone steaks a week. That's not just not enough. And I know these people have been your, your little customer for a long time. But we learned great advice today about how to still keep that customer and probably, you know, give them what they want, what they, they're looking for once in a while, but also invite them to try new things. You're about to embark on a new journey. You need to buy in, you get the buy in from your customers, your clients, and say, hey, we're going to try this new recipe. I know, Mrs. Jones, you've been coming here for 20 years. Would you like to be one of my first customers to try my new recipe? How special would that make her feel? And she likes it or give you some feedback, and suddenly she's buying your new item. Isn't that great? You have to stay relevant. That was the key takeaway. And I'll tell you another misconception, Eric, I think that we should get to regarding restaurant reality is a lot of folks say, oh, I'll just do a bakery or I'll just do a coffee shop or a sandwich shop because very limited hours, it's easier to run than a full service restaurant. There is a false sense of security there as well because the reality is you still have many, many challenges no matter, no matter what kind of restaurant you have. For example, a sandwich shop. People think it's very simple and great hours. You just sell these sandwiches at lunch. It's a great lifestyle. But the flip side is you've got a two-hour window to produce sandwiches. Isn't that right? That's right. So between 11.30 and 1.30, you must make enough money to feed your family and to make a living at it. This is two hours of making sandwiches. If you do the math, how many sandwiches per hour based on your rent, based on your food costs, not only do you have to be able to make a good sandwich, you got to be able to make it lightning fast. You have to be super, super fast. Almost, some people have said, you know, uh, we sold restaurant to the previous owner was Superman. He was not even human because he was moving so fast. But you have to. So it could be very tricky. If you own a sports bar, on the flip side, well, you have lunch, you have dinner. Happy hour. Happy hour. Late night. Sports event. You have such a multitude of different things. So maybe somebody says, ah, you know. The hours are great, but if I miss my window, my two-hour window, or if I fail to execute very, very fast, this might not be the right thing for me. And, and as well, staffing. You know, one person down in a bakery or on the line for sandwich shop, and you are really in trouble. Same thing, owning a coffee shop. Folks think that's easy, but what's the downfall there? A cup of coffee's not very expensive. How do you raise that average ticket? You've got a call from somebody who uh, ended up in the coffee shop business didn't mean to, right? This is a true story. This is somebody from overseas, uh, from, from, from Europe, that came to America, actually to central Florida, and thought they were a good baker in, in Europe, and says, hey, I'm going to put a bakery here in the United States, and they settled in central Florida, and had a $100,000 budget to remodel a, a current location, which is a very, very strong budget for somebody already existing, and a, a two-month, 60 days renovation time frame. And they gave us a call recently, after nine months of renovation, Mm. and a budget of $250,000 into oh. the renovation. Oh, I, I'm just, I'm cringing even thinking about I know, about Robin's that. about to fall off her chair, so, and you guys in the car, you, I'm sure you heard these stories and uh, listening, but this is a true story. This has just happened very recently. Just, I got a call this week from that. And, uh, you know, thinking like, oh, uh, well, I, bakery is up to a slower start than I expected because I don't have that many people coming. So I've decided uh, just, uh, you know, to throw in coffee, sandwiches, salads, soups, all sorts of things are not true to our, to our core. And as a result of that, they're still not having more sales. Because, again, one thing that uh, Carrie talked today about today, you know, is have a plan. Have a business plan. You can't just throw stuff on your menu or do certain things and expect results. You have to have a plan and execute on this plan. And your plan has to be fresh and every day. But unfortunately, that lady 
uh, told me that she wanted $500,000 for her business. When I told her that we'd be lucky to get her fifty to $75,000, I have a long, long silence on the telephone and said, I must talk to my husband and call you back. And I hope she does call back because it is a sad story. But this is where you have to understand that a simple thing can turn into a very big nightmare quickly. Uh, that is a distressing story. But on the other hand, when you buy an existing business, you don't start from scratch. You don't try to build it up from the ground up. You already have an established cash flow in many cases. You already have an established baseline of sales. You can not be a victim of failing to plan. That old idiom, plan to fail if you fail to plan, doesn't come into play because you've got a track record of numbers you can work off of. And we have a couple of opportunities just like that. I mean, we have a great bagel store in uh, Roswell, Georgia for sale. It's got great bagels and sandwiches, easy to operate. They're only open for breakfast and lunch, six days a week. It's about $125,000, I believe, and they're doing several hundred thousand dollars a year in sales, and it's ready to go. And they've been in business for over 10 years, so it is a very well-established place. And the owner, the current owner, was a first-time owner years ago, so they were able to, to manage the business and do that. Uh, don't forget, you know, one thing that uh, we learned today, too, is like, you know, said, you know, people go down like drunken sailors. We use that a lot. I use that the the uh, metaphor, I guess, that people, restaurant owners are like captain of a ship. They will not abandon ship. They will let go down with the ship all the way to the bottom of the ocean. Uh, the only problem with that, you are going to be drowning and you can't try again. If you are smart enough to recognize challenges and make a proper adjustment, you can succeed. Or if you decide this is not for me. Uh, you can just abandon ship but sell the ship to somebody else, meaning calling a restaurant broker and help you out. Uh, we also have, uh, what else do we have, Robin, that, that will be interesting for today's show? Well, interestingly enough, we have a bakery for sale in South Florida, and they specialize in exactly what we are talking about today. They do cakes for all occasions. So they're including their client list, their equipped kitchen, those all-important recipes uh, for sale with the transaction. Now, in this case, they are taking advantage of the uptick and the interest in uh, the bakery business and they're doing lots of cupcakes but you can set your own hours and take this business over and uh, our restaurant broker Ken Eisenband in the South Florida market has that one available for sale. Wow sounds like a good deal for somebody who's already got a, a sweet tooth and some abilities to cook some cakes Robin. And if you're absolutely on a mission to start from the ground up we can help with that. You know we have a former Starbucks space for lease in the Dunwoody area. So it's a great location, outstanding neighborhood and high income. But think about this, Starbucks didn't make it there. So what would you plan for? What would you do differently that a major player like Starbucks wasn't successful at um, to take over this space in a high traffic retail shopping center in a high income, high demographics area? And yes, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here, Starbucks is humans. They do close some stores, move them down the street or anything else. So. They are just like everybody else, trying, learning, and adjusting, which that's what we heard today. You need to learn to stay current. Your old 100-year-old recipe might have been great. Recipes, ingredients have changed. We've heard about all that today. So look hard at your restaurant, or if you're about to get into the restaurant business, get yourself a plan. And with that, Robert, take us out. Well, I think it is all the time we have today for Restaurant Reality. And I tell you what, Restaurant Reality was led in by uh, this new show on Food Network Save My Bakery, hosted by Carrie Vincent. You want to know more about that and more about this show? Visit us online at WeSellRestaurants.com. We're your industry authority and source for information in this industry. Eric and Robin Gagnon, the restaurant brokers. <laughs>